And it's the right page. Uh, a little housekeeping uh, for everyone. Senator McCaskill is going to be here shortly. Uh, this is an unfortunate but inevitable situation in which uh, we are going to have votes clearly get in the middle of uh, this morning's hearing. So what we are going to do is we are going to start immediately. Uh, when the Senator comes in, she will be on a panel by herself. She will, uh, she will speak, and by agreement, she will not be able to remain. She doesn't have enough time for all the members to question her. What I would like to do uh, with the Ranking Member's uh, approval is allow the Ranking Member to make his opening statement now, even before she arrives, so it is covered. Uh, I will withhold mine until the main panel. Uh, but what we are hoping to do is get as much read into the record, uh, but we will break for the Senator as soon as she arrives to ensure we get her before the vote. With that, uh, a quorum being present, this meeting is, uh, hearing has come to order, and I recognize the Ranking Member for his opening statement. Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you very much, and I, thanks, uh, and I want to thank all the witnesses uh, today for being a part of this hearing. In particular, I would like to extend a special welcome to Senator Clara McCaskill, who has taken time out of her busy schedule to be with us today. As many of you know, Senator McCaskill is the <coughs> chair of the subcommittee on uh, uh, contracting oversight on the Senate Committee uh, on Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs. And it is safe to say that no single member of Congress has been more active than Senator McCaskill at rooting out waste, fraud, and abuse in contracting across the Federal Government. I am also uh, thankful that Senator McCaskill could be here today because the Committee plans to review the 2011 High Risk Report issued by the Government Accountability Office. This report has become a critical tool in focusing Congress's oversight efforts. Uh, it lists 30 government programs and spending areas most susceptible to waste, fraud, or abuse. I had the opportunity yesterday to join the Comptroller General. Uh, Gene Dodaro, uh, our, uh, our Chairman, uh, ISA, uh, when GAO issued this year's report. As in previous years, the massive issues surrounding Federal procurement are featured prominently. Over the past decade, government contracting costs have escalated dramatically. In 2000, the Federal Government spent about $209 billion on procurement. That number has now grown to more than $500 billion in annual expenditures. During the same period, the number of sole source and non-competitive contracts have also expanded. In this year's high-risk report, six of the 30 programs on the GAO list relate directly to Federal contracting. They involve contracting at the Department of Defense, the Department of Energy, NASA, and across multiple Federal agencies. Several other entries on the GAO list uh, also significant contracting components, such as transforming the Department of Homeland Security. When you examine all of these together, they have a massive impact, accounting for hundreds of billions of taxpayer dollars every year. It is a real challenge to fully evaluate the extent of this problem. For example, during an interview last year, Defense Secretary Robert Gates offered what he called, and I quote, a terrible confession. He stated, and I quote, I cannot get a number on how many contractors work for the Office of the Secretary of Defense." End of quote. In many cases, congressional oversight of government contracting has led to meaningful reform. In 2007, when I became Chairman of the Subcommittee on the Coast Guard and Maritime Transportation, I launched a series of hearings to examine the Coast Guard's uh, multi-billion dollar acquisition program to modernize its ships and aircraft. We found that the Coast Guard had little in-house capability to manage a major procurement effort when it initiated the Deep Water Program. As a result, it outsourced many of its oversight responsibilities to private contractors during the work. Based on these results, I introduced legislation to make comprehensive reforms in the Coast Guard's acquisition program, and this legislation passed the House unanimously. In addition, Representative Tierney led an investigation uh, in the last Congress into Defense Department contracts for supply chain trucking in Afghanistan. As a result of that investigation, uh, General David Petraeus issued new contracting guidelines, created a task force to review contracting in Afghanistan, and moved to debar a major Federal contractor. To his credit, the Obama administration has made significant strides to improve government contracting, 
In 2009, the President directed Federal agencies to streamline their acquisition processes. And, and last year, the amount of uh, Federal contracting declined for the first time since 1997. The Administration's uh, initiative also resulted in a reduction of no-bid and other non-competitive contracts last year. Finally, moving forward, we have to continue this progress by conducting our oversight efforts in a sustained, dedicated and bipartisan way, and I know that the Chairman is committed to that. So I see that Senator McCaskill uh, has arrived, and I want to thank you, Senator, again for coming. I know that you have a hearing with Secretary Gates this morning, so we really appreciate you coming over. And if you have time uh, for one or two questions after your prepared remarks, I would appreciate it if you would give us any thoughts about how we can keep this oversight effort going on the contracting front, what steps can, can we take maybe even together to try to avoid sitting here again in two years with the problems worse and not going anywhere fast. Uh, again, we thank you. And, Mr. Chairman, I really thank you for your courtesy. I thank the Ranking Member. And uh, I am going to uh, do my opening statement after the Senator uh, has given her uh, views on this. Uh, two things for all the members. It is the rule of the committee that all witnesses be sworn. That rule is by policy not applicable to active members of the House and the Senate. Uh, although, if you want to be sworn for any reason, we will be happy to, <laughs> Senator. I will swear, but probably not that way. <laughs> then we will forego that. Uh, <laughs> one other policy of the committee, and I will be brief. Uh, as I said, I won't do my opening statement yet. But we do read our mission statement at the beginning of every one. And uh, in case you are considering your subcommittee having one, uh, I will read this one for you today. Oversight Committee Mission Statement. We exist to secure two fundamental principles. First, Americans have a right to know that their money, the money Washington takes from them, is well spent. And second, Americans deserve an efficient, effective government that works for them. Our duty on the Oversight and Government Reform Committee is to protect these rights. Our solemn responsibility is to hold government accountable to taxpayers, because taxpayers have a right to know what they get from their government. We will work tirelessly in partnership with citizen watchdogs to deliver the facts to the American people and bring genuine reform to the Federal bureaucracy. This is the mission statement of the Oversight and Government Reform. And with that, Senator, we are delighted to have you here. We realize that second only to our 25 or so amendments coming up in about 15 minutes, you probably have the busiest schedule on the Hill. And uh, I now recognize the gentlelady. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank both you and the ranking member for this invitation. I'm honored to be here. In fact, I, I would hope that uh, we would develop a strong working relationship. I think what's one thing, there are a lot of things we don't do right around here. One of them is we probably don't work together often enough across the hall, so to speak. And I would uh, enjoy the opportunity of work, working very closely with this committee as we tackle the incredibly challenging job of contract oversight. Um, it is, uh, I think if there is one thing we can agree on, it is that we have to be smarter and better about the way we spend the public's money. And we can't have an honest conversation about restoring sanity to Federal spending if we don't take a hard look at Federal contracting. There is a dirty little secret about Federal contracting. That is, um, there have been times that there has been some bragging going on about how we have shrunk the size of government. Well, when that bragging was going on, they weren't really being honest with the American people that the reason the government was shrinking in terms of government employees was not because we were spending less money. It was because we were contracting. In many Federal agencies across this government, you can walk in to a, a large office building and go down in one cubicle is a Federal employee, the very next cubicle doing the exact same job as a contractor. Employee, employee, contractor, contractor, employee, contractor, contractor. One of the challenges we have is to look at whether or not the contracting that has occurred in many agencies, whether we are getting value, whether or not we actually are saving money by the privatization that has occurred, and most importantly, whether we are gaining any efficiencies by that contracting, and that is just in the area of personal services. I am not even getting to the huge, huge mammoth problem 
of contracting for goods, which um, whether it's in the Defense Department or any other department, we have a long, long list of problems that need to be addressed. Of the 30 areas of government that the GAO office identified being most vulnerable to waste, fraud, and abuse, five have to do with the management of government contracts. The, and, and weapon system acquisition management, the Defense Department, contract management at the Department of Energy's Na National Nuclear Security Administration, acquisition management at, in a, at NASA, and the management of interagency contracting. Contracting is also a huge part of at least 10 more areas on the list, on the high-risk list, including financial management and supply chain management at Department of Defense, implementing and transforming the Department of Homeland Security, and the Medicare and Medicaid programs. In total, at least half of the most wasteful, most mismanaged, and most inefficient areas of government today involve major levels of contracting. It will be impossible to have a real impact on wasteful spending without focusing on the Defense Department. The Defense Department alone is responsible for almost a quarter of the high-risk areas in GAO's list. DOD is also responsible for more than two-thirds of the government's spending contracts. Holding government contractors and the Defense Department accountable for the way they spend money will help save the taxpayers real money and actually will eliminate waste, fraud, and abuse and provide America's men and women in uniform with the resources they need in a fiscally responsible way. I would also like to take the opportunity to acknowledge the extraordinary contributions that GAO makes to our efforts through the high-risk list and through the thousands of reports they release every year. GAO, along with the many agency inspector generals who work so hard to identify waste, fraud, and abuse, are the best weapons Congress has against wasteful spending. They save the government more through identifying savings and recovering money than they cost us. They save us more than they cost us. We need to make sure they have the resources and tools they need. In fact, we have a lot of discussions going around, which I think is very appropriate, about cutting the legislative budget. I support cutting the legislative budget, particularly when it comes to our offices and our committees. I think we need to be trimming our sales, just like most of America is trimming where they need to trim. But we must be careful that we do not trim those agencies that have the real opportunity of showing us the way to save even more money. So I hope that uh, through your influence, Mr. Chairman, and the influence of, of, of the ranking member and all the members of this committee, that you s that keep a watchful eye out for the resources that we dedicate to our government's auditors and, most importantly, to the General Accountability Office, Government Accountability Office. GAO's work should be our roadmap for places we need to cut spending and improve the efficiency of the federal government. The time has come to be honest, to feel the pain and suffer the political consequences of making hard choices about when and where the government should spend taxpayer dollars. We should start with the programs on the GAO's high-risk list. That's where we need to begin because that's where we know things are not being run well. <clears throat> GAO acknowledged in their report the federal government has made progress in many of the areas that they have identified. Part of that progress can be traced to the congressional actions taken in the last few years, including the Weapons Systems Acquisition Reform Act and other major, major pieces of contracting legislation passed in the past few years, some of which originated from the members of this committee. Some of the credit should also be, go to the increase in contracting oversight from this committee and others, which has helped drive substantial changes at Federal agencies. In fact, the Obama administration recently announced that for the first time in 13 years, overall contract spending actually declined last year. But this achievement cannot be sustained without ongoing aggressive oversight from Congress. It is one of our core responsibilities, which I know the members of this committee take very seriously. And when it comes to oversight of government contracting, this is a bipartisan issue. Many of the agencies and programs on GAO's list have been there for decades under administrations of both parties. In the Senate, I have been fortunate to work with true leaders on this issue on both sides of the aisle, including Senator McCain, Senator Levin, Senator Lieberman, Senator Collins, and more. Recently, the former ranking member on the subcommittee that I chair, Senator Scott Brown, and I were able, through oversight hearings, 
to make, I think, a real difference in legislation that you helped us pass that are going to clean up the, the, the disgraceful problems in contracting that resulted in broken hearts at Arlington National Cemetery. I look forward to my new ranking member, Senator uh, Rob Portman, will be the new ranking member of the Contracting Oversight Committee. I, he is an expert on government. He knows where there's a lot of problems that we need to be focusing on, and I'm looking forward to a strong working relationship with him as we move forward on aggressive contract oversight. In fewer than two years, the Subcommittee on Contracting Oversight in the Senate has held more than 15 hearings on government contracting. These hearings have addressed everything from improvements needed in federal contract auditing to Medicare contracts to, as I mentioned, Arlington National Cemetery. We have questioned no-bid contracts and loopholes that cost the government literally billions of dollars. We plan to continue to hold regular hearings in the subcommittee throughout this Congress and fight for legislation to address the abuses that we find. But we could hold hearings once a week, every week, for the next five years and, frankly, still have plenty of fish in the barrel that we could shoot. That is why I am so encouraged that this committee will be continuing your important work in this area. I look forward to working with you and coordinating with you so that we can be very efficient in the way that we move forward on contracting oversight. If your committee has a good idea and doesn't have time on the hearing schedule, we'd love to hear from you. Vice versa, we will track your work, and if there's something we're doing that we think would fit in nicely to some of the hearings that you're having, uh, I would look forward to, to that kind of cooperation also. We've got a lot we can do here. And this really ought to be an area that we don't need to play political games. This shouldn't be about elections. This should be about how good can we make this government, how responsible can we make this government to the people who pay the bills, and most importantly, we can do better in terms of how we run this government if we actually hold government officials more accountable for the way they're contracting. I could tell you horror story after horror story, and I'm sure, Mr. Chairman and ranking member, you could tell horror stories, too. I will tell you one anecdote that got me fired up, which is why this subcommittee was created. I went to Iraq on government contracting oversight trip. My trip was only to look at the way they were contracting. I was a brand new senator. I'd come right out of a government auditing office. I'd been the auditor in Missouri. So I was used to there being processes and procedures in government that made some kind of sense in terms of tracking the money. I'm in an office outside the outskirts of Baghdad, and I'm asking about the log cap contract. And any of you who have been involved in oversight of government knows that that is the huge contract that did all the logistical support for our military in Iraq. <clears throat> the estimate for the first year of the log cap contract when it was let was $700 million. It was a no-bid contract. It was a cost-plus contract. The first year that they estimated it was going to cost $700 million, it actually cost $20 billion. They put a PowerPoint up on the wall, and this poor woman in the room, she was the only one that didn't have a uniform on. I knew that she was the civilian that was in charge of doing all this. They looked to her to explain what had happened with this contract, and I was asking, as you might imagine, pretty aggressive questions. So the first year was $20 billion. The second year of spending on the contract went down to, I want to say, $16 or $17 billion. And I'm, these figures they may not be exactly right. I'm trying to remember them from my memory. And then she went on with her presentation. I was feeling sorry for her. So I wanted to you know, kind of throw her a bone. So I said, well, can you explain what you did that brought that level of contract down from $20 billion to $16 or $17 billion? And with God as my witness... She looked across the table at me and she said, I don't know, Senator, it was a fluke. <laughs> That's when I knew we had serious and significant problems with contracting, particularly in the defense space, particularly in contingency contracting. The Defense Department is doing a little better in Afghanistan than they did in Iraq. We still have major problems, particularly when it relates to tracking the corruption issue. But um, there's plenty of work for all of us, and I'm really honored that you asked me to come over this morning and, to be here, and I look forward to any questions you might have in a strong working relationship in the future. Well, thank you, Senator. Uh, we're going to have very, very little time for questions because not only do you have a hearing convening in 10 minutes, but we have about six minutes left on the clock for our own vote. I would only ask one question, and I think the ranking member has one also. 
would you be willing to meet on a bicameral basis with your, your ranking member and other members of your committee and members of this committee on a periodic basis if our schedules can be uh, put together? I think it would be terrific if we just met for coffee uh, once a month and talked over what you are doing and what we are doing and see if we can coordinate. Um, I think it has set a great example. We will have coffee, juice, and if, 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 if my uh, personal account will, will settle for it, you know, maybe even uh, a couple of donuts. With that, I would recognize the ranking member for a just, question. Uh, <clears throat> just one quick question. Um, Senator, do you think the President is doing enough to address these issues? And um, what kind of cooperation do you think we will be able to get uh, from him and his administration? I, I think um, Mr. Zients is trying very hard, uh, the performance officer in the White House. He's really working at it. I think they're going to come with some plans this year uh, that will surprise people in terms of the way they're willing to look at organ organizing government and realizing more efficiencies. The contracting piece is very hard because it's so stovepiped. Part of the problem, as you all know, we don't have the right databases. We have spent so much money on IT and haven't really gotten a product that allows us to, to peer into the world of contracting in an efficient and effective way. I think they are trying, but um, I think they need our oversight to do it better. Again, I want to thank you. And, Mr. Chairman, again, I thank you for your courtesy uh, to make sure that um, uh, Senator McCaskill was able to testify within her schedule. But thank you very much. Thank well, you. Thank you. And uh, I apologize to all the other members, but the Senator has agreed to come back uh, on an informal basis so that we can really have the one-on-one -on -one that I think will be helpful between the two bodies. Uh, with fairness to our witnesses, I, I would swear you in and then you would be all by yourself. So wh why don't we do this? We are going to break. We will come back immediately following the votes for all the new members on either side of the aisle. This is the most important thing we do every year, is to really look at the new high risk, uh, which, although cybersecurity is a big one, the $80 billion we spend in IT and get less than we paid for uh, obviously is important. We look forward to hearing that. Senator, once again, thank you for your graciousness. That We stand in recess.